I'd like to show you this Art and Arcana Visual History of Dungeons and Dragons book written by Michael Whitwell, Kyle Newman, John Peterson and Sam Whitwell. And you might have seen this in uh, the backgrounds of some of my older videos when I was still filming in front of my bookshelf. Uh, this has uh, a special place in my bookshelf. It's always presenting the cover because this is such a great cover. Uh, but it's overall a very good book. It's a mighty tome. I had to zoom my camera all the way out so it would fit in the frame at all. And this is, uh, as I said, both a history of Dungeons and Dragons and a collection and a history of the art in Dungeons and Dragons. And I have to say I have a weak spot for this style of oil painting artwork like you got in the 80s and 90s. Yeah. It's chronological and I find the the story of uh, Gary Gygax and TSR and the invention of Dungeons and Dragons fascinating. This is giving you a good overview, a lot of details actually, and how they would make do in the very early games and just trace the artwork from something. Like, this is a, a, a miniature dinosaur and some uh, toy castle and you can make a photograph of that and then trace it and you've got your cover art for an adventure module or something. Cool stuff. Yeah, this is uh, <laughs> one of those pages. Need a cool pose for your barbarian. Trace a uh, what's this? A Nick Fury comic. And now D and D is super big and mainstream. But when it started out, it was just like it was like the OSR fan scene, just small, printed and uh, hand stapled together booklets, pamphlets uh, containing all the rules and then a lot of imagination. Back then you couldn't even actually get those dice just in your gaming store. Everything that was not a D6 was considered exotic. So and making your own dice is uh, kind of having a a renaissance all of its own with uh, molds and 3D printing. There are more variety in dice than ever before. Don't want to go just through all of it. Eventually, <laughs> oh, there was the whole satanic panic episode in the US which uh, from a German perspective and uh, from 2020 hindsight <laughs> it's both a bit comedic but it's actually shocking. There were actual people uh, getting prosecuted going to jail because of of make-believe and fantasy actual witch hunt. This is a great piece. You've got everything. Dungeon, dragon, wizardry, mighty warriors. That helmet is a bit silly. This is a great piece. Got some uh, a somewhat more caricature style, somewhat low fantasy and down-to-earth. There's also a skeleton of an adventure on a tree unicorn in the background. That's wonderful. 
There's some inspiration for adventures right here, mates. Eventually, TSR got out of uh, these kind of ragtaggy early days and became a professional publishing company. And they've got some professional artwork made. There's still very early editions here, very early. Want to go to really professional looking artwork, you go to the AD&D days. At that time, TSR had its own art department. Professional artists working full time to make artwork for role playing games just for one company. Get some amazing artwork from that time. Look okay, here, it's the German edition. Or is it? No, that's not German. Fantasy Rolle Spill. Grundregler. I think that's probably Dutch. <laughs> this is uh, Arabic, if I'm not mistaken. Now that's AD&T, that's German. Handbuch für Spielleiter. Legendary artwork from the red box of basic D&D. Yes, Dungeons and Dragons used to have uh, toys and their own Saturday morning TV cartoon. This one. I've watched a few episodes and for my taste uh, there was not enough blood and gore. <laughs> I prefer Record of Lord of War. Uh, this book is just such a treasure trove of history, of art, of inspiration. This is the saddle for a dragon rider with a lance hoist. And you could construct this from this artwork if you wanted to, if you really, really wanted to. And this is great art, but even something sketchy as this would look good in, uh, in, a, in a fan sign. Or something in the vein of uh, Lamentations or Murkborg. Don't want to show every single page in it. Or I could. I think I have used this as the thumbnail in one of my videos. Fantastic. Yeah, back to the history of TSR. In the late 80s, after the really big boom, there was a downfall. TSR had spread its product line too thin. So, while they were selling the, the core books uh, well and profitable, they had made a plethora of different campaign worlds. And people who would play one campaign world wouldn't necessarily buy any of the products of the other campaign worlds. So the, the adventures and the setting books would only be bought by a part of the community. And they had Greyhawk, Forgotten Realms, Dark Sun, Spelljama. I can't even name all of them. So, 
Supposedly Advanced Dungeons and Dragons 2nd Edition was pretty good, pretty streamlined. I wouldn't know, I've never played it. For my taste, AD&D was always a bit complicated, honest. Let's go a bit forward. Forward in time. So eventually TSR went under and they were brought out by one of their biggest competitors, which was Wizards of the Coast who made Magic the Gathering. And uh, the guys from Wizards of the Coast were actually big D&D fans. And with that infusion of new money and new talent, they went ahead and made a new edition, the third edition. And this is the edition I personally started playing with. So all of these characters, these books and these artworks is what I saw when I started out with D&D. And I still love a lot of these illustrations. This dwarf is one of the quintessential dwarfs, in my opinion. And third edition was quite popular again. Uh, expanding the player base and you've got computer games in that time, like the Baldur's Gate series, Neverwinter Nights, played a lot of that, and all of the add-ons. Eberron was released in this time, and eventually, eventually, we come to fourth edition. Eventually, <laughs> maybe I've already skipped past it. Fourth edition was a mixed bag. They had some uh, neat ideas in there, but they were going for more like a massively multiplayer online role playing vibe with like powers that had several rounds of cooldown uh, and you could use once per encounter thrice per encounter or something like that i own the player's guide for fourth edition but i've never played it it didn't spark the want to play interest uh, that I was looking for. And I think at this point the artwork is getting a bit too cartoony for my taste here. This is the Darks on campaign setting from 4th edition. And maybe I can find something from 2nd edition from Dark Sun. Yeah, yes. Contrast this. This style of uh, artwork and presentation to this. You can still see that it's supposed to be the same setting. And you've got, but you've got more armor in this and less bare skin. This doesn't feel as epic and savage as this. Now this might be my, my personal preference. 
but really with fourth edition the artwork is getting a bit too cartoony for my personal taste. It's not that it's bad quality or anything. Finally, we come to fifth edition. One uh, everyone's familiar with, I guess. And the great renaissance of Dungeons and Dragons conquering the mainstream once again, being super successful. But you can see how it has changed over time. This is uh, the Vampire Strat, and from uh, very classic Christopher Lee Dracula inspired vampire, we go to uh, to this, which is still pretty good artwork, but. It's got a different vibe. This is m more closely resembles uh, the last Castlevania or the last Dracula movie that was in cinemas like five years ago or something. I admit this outfit is <laughs> a bit campy. Yeah, and this is the story still going. There's critical role in here, miniatures in here. Yeah. The history of Dungeons and Dragons in art and word so far Beautiful book, massive, massive book. And uh, I can't wait for the next edition in 10 years when they take a look back at 5th edition and the start of 6th edition and how the D&D, the RPG landscape would have changed in all of that time. For now, thanks for watching, like and subscribe, and goodbye.